get a sense of what company CEOs and professional investors are expecting. Taneo coming out with a new survey of just that. And some highlights include the majority saying economic conditions will worsen. More than three quarters are investing in AI. More than two thirds expect M&A activity to increase. And 92% say they will stay the course on ESG efforts. Maybe they won't be calling it ESG, but on those efforts nonetheless. Joining us now is Paul Curie. He is co-founder and CEO of Taneo. Paul, nice to see you. Nice to see you. What were you most surprised by in this survey? It's interesting. As a firm, Taneo, we have about 1,700 colleagues around the world. And because we're involved in big restructuring mandates, big reputational issues, big business strategy issues, we get the privileged seat in boardrooms and CEO offices around the world. And we also combined that with a discussion with institutional investors and CEOs over the last, uh, at the closing months and weeks of 2023. And through that process, we got a sense as to what's the big concerns over 2024. As you touched upon, M&A is one of the few factors that institutional investors and CEOs align on, which is going to be a blockbuster year this year, mm. um, okay. across regions uh -huh. and across the industries. But I think some of the industries that have focused, that have materialized even over since the start of the year include life sciences, technology, particularly AI-focused technology investing, and energy consolidation. Okay, so more deal making, and we're already seeing that even though the environment is not necessarily forgiving, borrowing costs are still pretty high, um, or they're going to stay at current levels, and Lena Khan is still at the FTC. She's not going anywhere, at least for now. So is the driver behind deal making generally more to defend market share or to take market share? It is both. There is defensive and offensive strategies in mind here across the board. It was a relatively um, panaceic. Uh, solution presented years ago, but now it is about, I think, both offensive and defensive. And I think the regulatory constraints that you speak of, the capital constraints, are factored into this, but the reality is that there is a lot of growth opportunities in the market and around the world. Are they still worried about some of the economic conditions that have dominated the discussion over the last few years, primarily with inflation and interest rates? I think the the reality is that AI is driving a lot of requirement for investing. Mm -hmm. uh, energy consolidation is a factor and a reality. Mm -hmm. And I think there is an increased appetite, as you've seen in the life sciences industry, for shareholder accretive actions, including on the spin-offs in front. Mm -hmm. I think what is really interesting is that that divergence of view between investors and the CEOs that they invest behind. Both have a very different view as to 2024 in terms of the economic conditions. Last year, on our survey from the previous year, you could argue investors got it right. They were bullish about 2023. Mm -hmm. They're bullish about 2024. Um, it's, I think, easier to understand that in many ways because the last year of an uh, election cycle uh, mm -hmm. in the U.S. particularly always delivered strong returns in the equity yeah. markets. But if you're a CEO, Romain, yeah. you're challenged with geopolitical issues, political issues, yeah. a really uncertain economic environment. Well, well, let's talk about that too because it's not just an election here in the U.S. I mean, I think the stat that everybody's talking about is something like 40 plus percent of the world's population is going to go to the polls at some point this year, including in some very prominent nations, including the U.S. West, and then we have an election, I think, this weekend in Taiwan. Uh, I know that the sh in the short term, these elections don't always move the needle, but obviously there are long-term policy consequences that can come back and affect corporate fundamentals. Yeah, these, the, the reality is, as you mentioned, half the planet go to the polls this year across multiple markets and multiple regions. And in our survey, the number one issue identified as the major disruptive factor for CEOs to address this year is political disruption. Mm -hmm. And that means trying to factor in what's the likely industrial policy changes. What could the regulatory or legislative shifts bring? And what would geopolitical trends get impacted by changed administrations across the world? So for the first time in our survey, it has been political disruption has been identified by CEOs across the world as a consequence of being the number one issue that they have to factor in, mm. both in terms of the opportunities and the challenges that it presents. And so there's been some political disruption when it comes to things like ESG. You have 92% of CEOs seeing the course on that, which is surprising because it diverges so much with the narrative that ESG is this political hot potato that is more trouble than it's worth at the moment. Are they simply just tweaking the language, going with responsible, accountable, sustainable, and, and continuing to do what they've been doing these last few years? Yeah, ESG is interesting. As you say, vast majority are staying the course on ESG. However, if you dig into the detail, about a third of CEOs are reconsidering, however, and reevaluating their DE&I policies. Mm. 
as a consequence, not surprisingly, due to the, the broad-based pressure that CEOs have to face on a whole range of issues. So I think the response is going to be about companies leaning in on the issues that matter most to them and their stakeholders. I think listening more rather than being forced into a position of pronouncing an opinion on all matters. So I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity for companies to do what's right on ESG yeah. without being running for office. But I am curious. You made a, a good, a good uh, a turn of phrase there because how much pressure is on these CEOs to make a statement? I mean, we saw that during, of course, uh, the George Floyd incident here in the United States. We've seen that recently with uh, the situation in Gaza and Israel uh, where there's been so much public pressure not, and, and for that matter, internal pressure by employees yeah. for their CEOs to come out and make a definitive statement. And if you don't do that, at least as we've seen with university presidents, you can lose your job. Yeah, I think the, yeah. the CEO class yeah. in particular has always shown themselves at the forefront of doing what's right for all stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And embracing ESG, I think, is going to be a key fundamental of that mandate moving forward. I think whoever CEOs are not running for office, we don't want them to run for office, mm -hmm. and they shouldn't be expected to have an opinion on all matters. Mm -hmm. What you will see is an increasing lean-in, and the survey supports this, and companies really double down on the issues that matter to their stakeholders, to their consumers, mm -hmm. and finding a path to make sure that they add value across those communities where appropriate. Right, looking for areas that have direct impact on what they do. You're going to Davos uh, this weekend, uh, where the big thinkers, the big uh, policymakers uh, will be gathering. What do you expect to be the theme coming out of Davos. I think it's interesting. I think coming into Davos is perhaps a good harbinger, and you mentioned the earnings season really starts in earnest tomorrow. I think across the board, CEOs have been reflectively cautious on the macroeconomic environment for this year, despite the bullishness of investors. I think most CEOs are controlling what they can control, focusing on what I call operational alpha and waiting a more um, supportive macro environment for, for growth strategies. So I think that's the sentiment entering into Davos. As always, Davos does deliver some new, I think, perspectives. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see next week whether that level of caution and that level of concern over 24 gets accelerated or whether it gets dampened over the course of those discussions. All right. Well, uh, we wish you well uh, on that trip. I'm sure you'll be uh, in hot demand here by uh, all of the uh, big CEOs and other thinkers there out at Davos. Paul Keery is the co-founder and CEO over at Teneo.